to start today's program. Uh, we are very honored today to have Dr. Uday Shankar Chatterjee, a very renowned personality in the All India scenario. With thank you, thank you. Both pediatrics and the urological aspects. I am also honored today that today's resource person is Dr. Kollani Vasu, and uh, I am honored that she has accepted our invitation to be the chairperson. Thank you, madam, for accepting our invitation. And uh, I also uh, thank and... Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Audible. Yeah, audible. So I also uh, uh, welcome all my colleague friends <clears throat> about today's program and also the students, those who are preparing themselves for two days program on pediatric surgery, which is one of the very important aspects to uh, overcome the hurdle of examination and also for day-to-day -day clinical practice in neurology. With this small introduction, I, requ I will request our president, Dr. Anbir Prasad Singh, to welcome all the um, uh, faculty and say, few words of wisdom so that the program can continue smoothly. Over to Dr. Ranbir Prasad Singh, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Today's program of pediatric surgery, mainly the hypoespedius, undescended testis, and VUR, and its related surgical um, procedures will be discussed. And I'm happy to know that all the teachers, the students, moderators, and the expert. Uh, most of them have joined, I think. So the important thing is to not carry the take home message after the discussion. What we have learned from this, we have learned everything. So what is the important thing we are missing? Where are the mistakes we are making in exam and where in the practice? So these are the few points I hope that moderator and teachers will keep, take care of this. I'll be here also. And if anything, others can also answer. For all, it's not necessarily that the students who is participating, teachers who are there, so others can also, and that has be clear. So thank you very much. And please proceed with the program of this, these three topics. Uh, I would only request Dr. Chatterjee to introduce all the faculty, today those who are present and also the students before you start the class. Over to Dr. Chatterjee, please. Unmute yourself, Dr. Chatterjee. Audible, yeah. huh? Hello? There is some extra voice. Hello. Please and please and please. You are not on it. You are not audible, Dr. Oh, Chatterjee. Yes, audible. Yes, yes. Okay. Hello. Yes. Now I will call uh, the doc, Dr. Ovilek. Ovilek Tripathi, Dr. Tar. Tadha Ajay Kumar Dhirubhai, Dr. Rakesh and Dr. Tajib Alam as a student. And I will also invite expert or our expert, Dr. Kollani Basu and myself moderator. At the same time, there is the teachers, Dr. Singhaniya, Dr. Nilanjan Mitro, Dr. Arshad Jamal, Dr. Shunirmal Choudhury, Dr. Bimolash Purkayat and Dr. Shoshikan Tewari. I think all of you are here now, present. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. A anybody absent? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. This is Dr. Arshad here, sir. Yes, yes. I can see you. Yes. 
Ovilek Tripathi, I, yes, sir. I, I think uh, you have to start. Or yes, sir. Anybody? I, now the role of the teachers. Nilanjan, are you there? Audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. You may start now. And the time is one thing. It is divided in the hypospadias for half an hour. And undescended testes also half an hour. Most of them are half an hour. Okay, we'll try to stick our time so that, and, and in the meantime, we'll discuss as much as questions and answer uh, as possible and to clarify everything for the students. Okay. Dr. Chaduji, please, please welcome our resource person, Dr. Kollani Basu. Yes, I yes, Dr. Kollani Basu. Oh, hello, Kollani ma'am. I think you have joined. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Kollani ma'am. Hello. I think she's not present. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Sir, I'm Dr. Sushikan Tiwari. Yes. Anything from you? Yani, yani you have just joined? I just joined, sir. Sir, uh, made a small presentation regarding hypospadias one case presentation. I can put some pictures and you can ask questions. All the teachers, I think you are ready. Hello. Hello. Hmm. Yes, sir. Nilanyan Sunimal. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Really. Dr. Singhania? Is it there? Ashad Jamal is there and Bimolesh Purkayat? Shashi Kantewari? Yes, sir. I'm yes, sir. Okay. okay, okay. I got it. Now you, you start. Nilanjan, you can uh, present uh, one slide show from the, there. You may ask something. Uh, Shoshi is going to present, sir. Okay, okay. Sir, give me some time, sir. Okay, okay. So students are there? Yes. Students have come, sir? Yes, sir. Obilek is there? Yes, sir. Ajay Kumar Dhirubhai? Is it visible, sir? Dr. Rakesh? Yeah. No. I'm sorry, I got down. Next, I'll also be there. No, no, Kollani, we can hear you. Hello, Kollani. Kollani, ma'am. We can hear you. I'm here, sir. Hello. Welcome. 
So we can, uh, the, uh, Professor Kalyani Vasu, for today's program. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. So I have sent it to Professor. Is some problem regarding presentation. Okay, Nilanjan, from your laptop, you start the presentation, which is creating yes, some sir. problem. Sir, I am not using my laptop. Uh, can you please, uh, I have sent you previously. Yes. Can you please share the okay, files sir. with Okay, sir, I, I, will, I will share it. Okay. 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 It's Ruma. Yes, uh, just please wait. I can share okay, it. Okay. So the students are there. Were the students please look, call their name? I think they are present already. Dr. Obhilek Tripathi, Dr. Yes, sir. Tadha Ajay Kumar Dhirubhai. Yes, sir. Ajay. Ajay. Okay. Dr. Rakesh. Yes. Dr. Rakesh. Dr. Taji Balam. Yes, sir. Taji Balam. Yes. Yes, sir. One is uh, Dr. Rakesh. Dr. Rakesh is absent. Okay. Carry on. Uh, Ruma, please call Dr. Rakesh and find out his status. Yes. Visible now. Yes. So this is a six-year-old male child admitted in our ward recently with mother complaining of uh, there is downward bending of penis since birth, splaying of urines she has noticed for last four years and there is abnormal opening of meatus she no, uh, first noticed at four years back when there was a splaying of urine. The child has a poor stream of urination for last three years. We're showing the pictures. So this is the picture of the child who is admitted there. Okay. Wait, wait. Who are the students? So, myself, I'll the party. What do you want to know about this case? Because after that, there will be question answers from all the panelists. Uh, I want the meters is the sub coronal, coronal meters. Uh, it's the coronal and sub coronal, nearly coronal. Yes. Yes, sir. And glance confusion looks like. Good glance is well developed, yes, sir. And this groove is also not deeply grooved. And this groove is not deep, urethral yeah, plate is not too much developed, yes. Sir. And about cordy, sir, is it uh, mostly less than 30? Yeah, there is a distal cordy, yes, sir. There is no torsion, penile torsion. No, there is no penile torsion. And what is this a stretch penile length? Is around uh, four centimeter. Both the testes are visible and palpable. Size is adequate, not measured. Yes, it. So it says scrotal transposition, sir. What do you say? Scrotal transposition. Uh, scrotum is normal. Okay, sir. There is no such transposition. Yes, sir. All right, sir.
Anything more? No, no, sir. Okay, next slide. So it's normal size penis. Yes, there is a glandular curve. Glandular curvature, ventral glandular curvature. Subcoronal, ectopic meatus, dorsal pubescal yes, hood. Yes, Sprotum is well developed. Yes, with good rugosity. Yes, Bilateral yes, test sir. is at normal position. Apparently, bilateral symmetrical in size and shape. Yes, sir. Hairs are not developed. There is no obvious abnormality in perineum. Okay, sir. Next slide. Palpatory findings are all inspected findings. Uh, whatever we have seen are confirmed by palpation. Pubic yes, symphysis is in midline. There is no apparent gap. Well formed glands, wings with ventral curvature of penis with dorsal perpetual hood and ventrally located ectopic pinhole meatus at subcoronal location and adequately developed. Eutherpate is not adequately developed. I feel that this is smaller in size, it's less developed. Scrotum, both testes are symmetrical in shape and size, form, and non tender yes. with intact sensation for his age. Yes, sir. Next. Sir, you can ask the question. So, hello. Yes, sir. Hello, Shunin Mal or Nilanjan. Sir. Hello. Hello, you start something, some questions. So, the you said that the earth is underdeveloped, no? Yeah. You Urethral plate is not well developed. So how will I assess the urethral plate? To the students. Uh, the students. So Ajay, Ajay Dada is there? Ajay? Hello. Hello. What the students? Sir, I will like party. Can you listen to me? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 you are Ajay Tim party, no? I will like party. So how do you assess the urethra? So first we see the width of the urethral plate. Good. Second thing we see the whether the opening which is present, urethral, ventral urethral meters, whether it is uh, what's the shape of the meters, whether it is covered with the dartos spongiosa or not, top of spongiosa or not. And how to access the urethral plate? You look for the Hello. Yes, sir. So, do you assess the width of the urethral plate? And there's any correlation of the width of the urethral plate? Width? It should be, sir, less. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. So, do you want to test the width of the rotor plate? Yes, sir. And? So, whether is uh, any palpate the rotor plate? Whether, whether is, this is a sapel or not, whether the rotor plate is a or not, do you want to assess whether it is a, uh, that, uh, it is a fibrosed? Do you want uh, to assess that? Will palpate the rotor whether it is a or not, whether the overlying skin is a or not? Okay. And the urethral mobility is present or not? And it is covered with tattoos. So spongiosa or not? Yeah, yeah, that's one yourself. Whether there's spongiosa or not, and okay. Udayada, any comment about your cell plate? Yes, actually, the examination, what you want to see. Just think of that you are going to operate on this child. That means if the plate is adequate, adequate means the, according to age, the how much catheter will be introduced. That much width, that, is, that means that much millimeter of plate is necessary. If it is there, then it is adequate. 
and the plate if it is glistening or not if it is there good plate then operation is something otherwise we have to think of other alternatives yep. and now the another thing the, for the hypospadias yes, you have to see the cord is present or not clinically yes, you can just guess or estimate something how to get the whether the cord is present or not how to test clinically is there any test so is gitis tester gitis test is paraoperative but in the clinically sometimes examination there may be reaction of the penis and times we lift the prepuce yes and, and just stretch the penis yes sir yes from there you can you can guess how much cord is there but final thing after degloving the penis you have to uh, see whether the cord is present or not particularly this type of patient do you expect there will be uh, much cord or usually in 10% of the 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 still hypospadias cord is present but on the pictures there no, is no, cord is no, present sir on no. seeing the pictures in this type of coronal or subcoronal hypospadias do you expect cord will be there Uh, usually actually no cordy is due to the failure of full growth yes yes actually it should not there should be minimal cordy okay yes sir anything from nilanjan hello yes actually yes sir you are there we thought that yes, the yes, uh, plate has to be taken in mind less than 1 cm is very poor ureter plate mm. um, if it is more than 1 cm then we can go for uh, trp uh, repair uh, in will, that will keep in mind though, how to repair the hypospadias uh, what uh, what okay. operation uh, do we think of yeah. and according to the ureter plate we shall uh, plan our surgery dr tajib alam yes sir what do you write the complete diagnosis of this patient Uh, it is um, um, a subcoronal uh, subcoronal uh, distal hypospadias. Subcoronal means distal. Yes, a subcoronal hypospadias with uh, ventral cordy with a dorsal hooded prepuce. With uh, meatus appeared to be sir normal. No, uh, I have told it's stenotic. Okay, okay. With a st uh, with meatal stenosis. And there are six criteria to, uh, to explain for the hypospadias. You have to write in a complete sentence the six criteria whenever you give a diagnosis for hypospadias in an examination. The subcoronal. You have to write only this. You have to apply some questions. I mean, you have to write normal diet. Write this. Please, please. What do you What do you think? What are the things has to be mentioned in a diagnosis of a hypospadias? Regarding the position, regarding the size of the meatus, regarding glands, whether it's normal or uh, smaller glands, regarding whether circumcised or non-circumcised, whether there is a cordy or not, or what are the other things you have to mention? Uh, we have to see the urethral plate and we have to see testes whether uh, the testes is uh, palpable or not. So you have to combine all these six criteria and say it in a one sentence. Why? When you have to. Uh, Answer in the exam or write in the answer sheet. Yes, sir. So you have seen that there is a body in the distal part of the. Penis. How do you classify uh, hypospadias? So we usually classify hypospadias as hypospadias anterior, middle, and posterior. The anterior usually comes with glands, annular, coronal, or subcoronal, and middle the middle. Middle, middle, mid penile, and posterior are penoscrotal, or mid scrotal, or perineal. There are two types of uh, classification based on the meter size. Before OT, that is clinical, and at the play at the time of operation. How does these two differ? Suppose in this case, in this case. How does how does how do you think it will differ uh, later on when you develop the on penis? Clinically, it looks like a uh, anterior, but on intraop it will be become mid middle one because the urethral meters will will migrate proximally. Doctor.
Dr. Jamal, would you like to ask? I wanted to ask one thing. There are two ways of classifying a hypospirals. One is according to the site of the meatus, which they said right now. What is the other way of classification which is more functional? It divides it into simple and complex hypospirals. Yes. Are you aware of this? Hello. Hello. Can you Hello. hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Dr. Tajib. Yes, sir. Can you, can you answer? Sorry, sir. I, can, I did not hear, sir. There is another way of classifying the hypospadias into a simple hypospadias and a complex hypospadias. Are you aware, aware of this classification? That's more clinically useful. The complex hypospadias uh, who has undergone a uh, history of uh, hypospadias repair before or is associated with uh, PXO or scarring? Okay. The simple is uh, is those which has got a normal glands, a normal penis, no proximal or a penoscrotal or a perineal hypospadias, and with no cardi. That is a simple hypospadias. Rest all of the hypospadias yes. come into the complex hypospadias. They require additional procedure to collect, uh, to, to correct it. Yeah. That means the hypospadias which which needs only the erythroplasty, otherwise all are complex. Right. Is it, Dr. Jamal? Yes. Am I correct? Yes, yes, yes absolutely yes. right, sir. Next. Nilanjan, would you ask any question? Dr. Tazib. Yes, sir. What is wrong with this patient? What is wrong with this patient? So the the presence of no abnormal position of the meatus. Age. Age is wrong. Age. This diagnosis should have been made much earlier, if not for the awareness of the patient. Why is it so important? So because... Uh, Ideal age for correction is 6 to 18 months, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So before the uh, social awareness of the patient and also if the correction happens early, then the wound healing will be slightly uh, better and uh, the nocturnal penile erections will not be there. So in the uh, as early as possible, preferably within 6 to 18 months, it is preferred. Yes. Basically, yeah. when the child starts to go, go to the school, school. then yes, the social, social stigma begins that uh, whenever the uh, child pees, and the uh, other uh, other uh, school batchmates look at at the penis then then there is a problem and they get depression regarding that one second thing is that if there is a in this child there is one more issue it's a small size meatus stenotic meatus there is another point in that i mean uh, because of the age there has been there has uh, there are some few papers in which you know they have found out that the erythroplasty which is done earlier fares better in adulthood. Yes. Because if you do the erythroplasty later, there, there is bound, bound to be urethral structure at a later stage, at a higher rate than if you do it earlier. So that is one of the, because one of the greatest problems with the uh, hypospedia surgery is, is the sustenance of the erythroplasty, which is difficult uh, to maintain. If you follow the patient, they, you will find that a uh, lot of recurrent structures are there, which are diffi very difficult to manage. So that is why age criteria is there. If you catch the patient early on, your results are going to be much better. Right. Who are the other students? Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. Right. Is there any role of a hormonal therapy in hypospadias? And what exactly is it? Where is it indicated? So if when the glance is not well developed and urethral plate is less than 14 mm, you can go for a hormonal therapy. If the urethral plate is less than 10 mm and the glance width is less than 14 mm. So in such patients, testosterone, local or injectable therapy uh, uh, can be given. 
with varying results. Uh, and HCG injections can also be given preferably in pre pubertal boys. Okay. What's the dose? Two milligram per kg should be given four weeks and two weeks before the surgery. Five weeks and two weeks before surgery. How much, how much did you say? Two milligram per kg. Yeah. Correct. Right. So, one uh, last thing which I wanted to ask. There is a meatal stenosis in this. So, do you feel that uh, do you feel there is a need of, of doing an RGU in this patient to rule out urethral strictures, proximal urethral stricture? Okay. You don't want to do it. Hello? No, yes, sir. sir. I don't want to do it. Did I make myself clear? Yes, sir. The, 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 we can uh, try for a cannulation with a six French feeding tube. If it... Uh, before the surgery? Before the surgery, sir. Before the surgery? On a no pd basis? You mean calibration, yes. right? So we can, we can yes, do sir. a Euroflowmetry to document... Uh, uh, whether there is any obstructive pattern or not. Okay. The no. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, good idea of Euroflometry. Not only that, after operation, you, you, you will check whether the, you have maintained that flow or not. It may be initially if the flow will be less than the preoperative level and after that, after about one year or something like that, it will be at par with the preoperative level. That is a good idea of your opponent. Sir, bemol is here. Yes, yes, bemol is. Sir, uh, I want to make a slightly different comment regarding this particular case. Uh, yes. This seems to be, sir, uh, coronal and glandular, mostly. Yes. Uh, according to the picture. Now, if there was no coronal part, only the glandular part, mm -hmm. and there is uh, hardly any cordy, if there is only a glandular part, yes. uh, usually, so does this always need treatment or cure unless there is any obstruction of the urine? Yes, that is the good question. That is, or who, who will answer? So we can leave the patient if there is glandular or coronal, because at, in this patient they can stand and maturate, and so they are they can can do sexual intercourse at the at, at the when they become adults. So no harm if there is no body. Why you are treating this patient without body? It is the glandular and only it may be near about that corona. Is if you don't do any treatment, any problem will be there or not? So what no are the goals of the surgery? The goals of the surgery is cosmetically first is cosmetic, second is able to stand and maturate, third is able to inseminate. The patient is having a metal stenosis in this patient, as yes. mentioned before. So I would for, like to operate. Yes, yes, for that, you have to go for the metotomy or something like a small operation, not the erythroplasty. But during this process, actually, the, this, for this type of hypospadia, there is a coronal or glandular main idea of treatment is for cosmesis. So we have to communicate with the, uh, pa uh, with the patient's uh, parents and yes. uh, we have to be in, uh, we have to counsel them and uh, it depends basically it is a shared decision that if they do not want an extensive surgery only a mutual dilatation can be done yes. and if they want a uh, corrective surgery a corrective surgery can be done so that is the one demolish Yes, Hello. sir. That is that is that is the ideal answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Glandular hypospadias without any problem does not need regular treatment or reconstructive surgery yes. because the cost of the surgery will be more than the benefit of the surgery. But most of the time, the guardians ask whether there will be any problem in future. That is their question during insemination or not. But the glandular hypospadias usually does not cause any problem in later uh, birth rate or. Yes, yes, yes. Next. 
Is there Kollani ma'am present? Yes. Hello. Yes, yes. Your comment, please, regarding this. Actually, I don't want to. The name is the picture of the taken. So, is there any prominent or superficial hood? Because one goal, especially for those people who are having circumcision for religious interest, there is a prominent dorsal superficial hood. Lose redundant, be very unhappy with the uh, cosmetic appearance if we leave it untreated. So that part has to be taken care of because uh, we just can't say that a simple vasectomy will do if there is a prominent crucial. And I can can I ask a question to the uh, presenters, the students? What are drawbacks of uh, hormonal therapy? What are the drawbacks of hormonal therapy? Is yes, there any drawback? Yes, sir. Especially if you are using it in a uh, small child, say two year, three year old. Sir, this fact. Sometimes many times they develop secondary sexual characters. The pigmentation of the penis in the scrotum. And so, the mature fusion of the epiphysis, which will actually ultimately result in stunting of growth. So instead of using a systemic uh, testosterone, it's uh, use local. local testosterone. And if it is not available, can you make any makeshift arrangement? Because Thanos cream is half the time not available and it's very costly. Anything can you improvise? Actually, it can also be used. It's can also be used. And there are some studies showing that HCG uh, causes degeneration of the conspiracy to over over prolonged use. But we are only using two poses, so we don't expect that. And then we can use topical injection testosterone mixed with some local emollient. In our department, we use it very frequently. The smallest size, maybe a cream, we use one M2, uh, 25 milligram aquavirone in it. And mix it properly and use twice daily, yeah. once after the bath and once after the uh, at bedtime. The timing of surgery after topical testosterone is very important, especially there is appearance of dark pigmentation and uh, prepubic hair. We should stop topical application. Or you want to Further, are they aware of the entity uh, intact produced megameters, which is somewhat reverse of the uh, Megameters. Megameters. Seen at the time of circumcision, uh, refuse is normal, but there's a big meter. In the, on retraction of the produce, you find the reverse system at the and there is space of the urethra, which may sometimes cause soiling of the shoes and all. And parents are not really always happy, especially before uh, offering Nawaz, they have a problem with soiling of underclothes. So, some people want surgical procedure for that also. And especially just now, there is some. Though the success rate, I'm not very happy about and mobilize the units of 0.5 to 0.8 millimeter meter and bring it to the normal position. Being done by quite a few pediatric surgeons, mm -hmm. but there's a high rate of it that goes back to the first position. Madam, sorry to interrupt, but your voice is very low it is very difficult to follow can you please hold the mic closer to your mouth sure am i audible now yeah yes, i think yes. it is better now yeah no. there is a procedure called back procedure which is mobilization of the whole meters up to 0.8 uh, centimeter that is eight millimeter or so from the, up to the corona or glandular position and bring it 
to the intended position, which is almost normal position. Quite a few pediatric surgeons practice it, but there is a high chance of retraction and again the meters goes back to the normal position. So I think one of the goals uh, of hypospedia surgery is the penis should look like a circumcised normal penis with the meters a slit like meters. So just not metoplasty may not be acceptable to everyone. As I mentioned earlier, that if there is a prominent dorsal prepucial hood, only metoplasty will not be acceptable because the appearance will not be normal. Now I think our next topic, that is the undescended testes. We have to go towards undescended testes. Is there any presentation regarding this? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Just wait. Yes. Who will present? Who will take this undescended so, testis? So in the hyperspedias, we have not gone to the surgical to so how to manage the case. I think there is another slot and afterwards. Okay, you can complete. Okay, you start that. Now, after that, undescended testis will be there. Okay. You just ask question regarding the management, surgical management. Surgical management of this case pertinent will be pertinent instead of since hypospid. Only or metoplasty only. Another procedure. Okay. Okay. Hello, yes, sir. How will you manage this case? Bro? Sir, after routine investigation, I would like to do TIP, sir. Hello? Okay, okay. Sir, after, after doing routine investigation, posting the patient for uh, surgery, I would like to do it. Mm -hmm. Like to do what? TIP. Oh. Uh, I have a question for a surgical purpose, sir. Yes. Uh, for the student, uh, mm -hmm. remember this is a hypospedia surgery, one of the most uh, maybe complex reconstructive urethral mm -hmm. surgery. For the student, can you just uh, judge who is the ideal person? Is it a urologist? or a urologist interested in doing hypospedias or a pediatric surgeon who are interested in doing this type of surgery, who will be the ideal person for doing hypospedia surgery or everyone should do hypospedia surgery? No, no, this question is not for this forum, no. Actually, no, no, we no. Would go for I am the not going on principle. that part. Uh -huh, principle, yes, yes. principle. Only the principle. Actually, so. I want to emphasize that reconstructive surgery is a reconstructive surgery who is needs a regular practice, like if I got only one case in a year and I do hyperspedial surgery, despite all techniques that may not have best result. So some cases has to be done by a person, whatever is surgeon, urologist or pediatrics, that is not an issue, but who is doing regular basis that have a best outcome despite oh, oh, every okay, okay. procedure. This question we will is... Not, will... We will not be having all types of hyperspedias throughout, your, throughout the year. Maximum cases are distal one, and those are easily being tackled. But for the proximal ones, uh, uh, we can't uh, leave a patient for the pediatrician. Pediatric surgeon to do the case. Yeah, yeah. But some urologists can do if they are interested or doing regularly. They can also do it, these cases. That means no, what they... is the principle of surgery? Urethroplasty. Principle. Yeah, yeah. That means whether we will go for making a tube. We will go for cutting the verticals, I uh, will do slit, that is the TIP or any operation, any, any type of operation. What are the other types? Hello, can you Sir, hear me? Listening. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Main principle, the principle is that the, there is the dearth of vascularity in the hypospadia. So we have to increase vascularity and at the same time, we have to keep the vascularity intact 
we should not damage any vascularity by any procedure. It is the main philosophy, and for that, for any hypospadia surgery, you have to follow this. That means preoperative, you are used androgens. During dissection, the dissection should be that much so that there is no damage. The other procedure. Any comment from Avilek? What you know? So first, we, we should not use the monopolar cautery, sir. Yes. So we should go for the tonic weight. And we should go for go for tonic. Yes, sir. To tonic. No, no. I try not to use tonic. Yes. That's what we call it. You have to preserve the vascularity or the capillary okay. circulation. Okay, sir. So the tunicate, adrenaline, you have to avoid it. If you can do without those, that means you are expert. Otherwise, not. The minimal handling of the tissues. Yes. And use a uh, microsurgical instrument. Use a finer sutures. Yes. What size? PDS 6030. That's for the age. 5060 or even uh, zero in small child or slightly uh, older children, maybe uh, 4050. Which type of catheter would you use? Self retain? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to. Yes. Self retain uh, catheter or like use a infant feeding tube? Catheter or feeding tube. Like to use okay. infant feeding tube. Wait a keep it. Not a folly. Small tube I'm also used to pull the folly so it can further damage. Damage the reconstruct. Yes, and Not ideally, a... any tube that will be reconstructing should be over a especially for a two-year-old child. Eight French catheter and at the end of the procedure, it was eight French and catheter should not be very tight. Next, uh, regarding the vascular flap, at the uh, outset, I have told that the main, th main theme of reconstruction is to increase vascularity and to preserve vascularity. And there are various types of um, clefts to increase vascularity. That is the Dato's flap and tunica vaginalis, and mainly two. And in this particular case, what you will prefer? I will prefer the Dato's flap. Yes, Dato's flap. It is easier and it is not, you are not exploding the testis. That's why it is the Dato's flap is preferable. So okay. proximal... At the same time, yes. Proximal... At the same what type of... <clears throat> Let's discuss the distal uh, uh, surgeries and the proximal yes. surgeries first. Yes, so what yes. are the types of uh, surgeries which can be planned, <laughs> which, you, which you have uh, in your armamentarium for this particular case? Anyone? Uh, TIP, sir. Okay. So then we can go for Matthew's flip flap. Okay. Ma Mac pipe procedure, metal advancement, then plastic can be done. Okay. For so that, there, there should be a urethral mobilization. First, we have to see the, whether urethral is mobile or not. And it is usually done in the glandular with more success rate. So if you're doing a magpie, would you still require a Dato's flap? No, sir. No, sir. Hello? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah, that's what I want to say. For distal hypospadias, the Dato's is not mandatory. If it is coronal uh, in location, or coronal, coronal or sometimes up to subcoronal also, Dato's is not mandatory. But for all the other cases, Dato's is definitely a, a good option. Isn't it, Chatterjee, sir? Yes. Am I right? Yes, yes. yes. One thing, uh, actually, the occurrence of fistula 
it's most commonly at the coronal level it is the junction of glands which is highly vascular and junction of the penile skin that is in the dorsally it is enough vascularity is there but not ventrally that's why we are mostly afraid of the coronal region that's why i prefer to put some vascular tissue vascular is flap in the corona and not for the glands but for the corona right uh, to the students i wanted to ask one thing there are there are various surgeries which you, which you mentioned like macpy and matthews and tip any other procedure a uh, duplex in a ps duplex types or another procedure is uh, urethral advancement urethral advancement is also yes, one procedure which has picked up recently so what i want to ask is yes, that sir. when you have got so many surgeries in your hand how do you select what to do so on the basis of the success rate tip has the maximum success rate of 91% would you like to do tip in this case or uh, in this case let's discuss case by case i would go so for tip in this sir. case it has got a well developed glands cleft is there and its length is good it is subcornally location with a metal stenosis what would be the ideal type of surgery would which you think will be suitable for this case the macpy should be uh, ideal for this i think metal advancement okay But that will not take care take care of the metal stenosis. Yes, I will prefer sir TIP sir. Okay. Why? So because glands rings are well developed. So in I, after incising the groove, we can well vascularize the urethral plate sir, and over that we can cover with the glands. yeah this is actually subcoronal but when you dissect it it will become distal penile so length, there will be a significant increase in the length of the defective urethra number one secondly yes, uh, the meatus is stenosis you need to do something about it and tip is one procedure which uh, you can combine uh, and uh, you will be able to uh, do the meatal stenosis in that so tip is the procedure which you should contemplate in this case Yes, Chatterjee sir. sir's opinion would be better, I think. So in this case, yes, yes, TIP is better. And one thing I want to mention that is the interesting history regarding the Magpie operation. Actually, uh, the um, about fifty years back, the people used to do the metal correction, that is the metal stenosis, metal tummy operation, and Dacet innovated that. At the same sitting, when I am doing metal tummy, why not advance? Why not to advance the urethral opening, metal urethral yes. meters? Yes, it was actually a, a one operation. If it fails, it doesn't matter. So he did it casually, and after that, it became popular, and it was refined in various order that it became a standard urethroplasty operation. Okay, that that's why actually the idea was that it is not. for the cosmesis was not that much uh, necessary at that time but metal stenosis that is the urinary flow was necessary that's why they along with the metotomy they used to do macpy but in this situation tip will would be the better yeah finally i think so we are running out of time final yes. two questions i would like to ask when do you consider a spc as a diversion additional diversion in case of hypospadias surgery when would you consider and what is your uh, time for voiding try normally when would you like to remove the cavity <laughs> time for voiding try usually after 2 weeks 2 weeks is a little long time for 7 7 to 10 to days 7 to 10 days yeah we like to give voiding try up to 7 to 10 days yeah for a distal hypospadias a week is a good time because the later you are you'll see tissues getting macerated so a week is a, is a good time for a distal hypospadias but uh, for proximal hypospadias
about two weeks. Optimal hypospadias ten to two, ten to fourteen days. Yeah, about two weeks. I I have a small comment, sir. Uh, for the student, there are almost more than three hundred procedures described for the hypospadias, but you need not need to know every each and every step. Hardly you need to know four or five cases. Well. to cover your most of the hypospadias cases and most commonly performed procedure is tip because it is more widely acceptable and everyone has almost similar result in their hand but for the proximal one or cripple hypospadia or complex cases is may not be suitable that needs some substitution or some very modification the most important thing is you have to close in layers because urine is totally infective and the high chance of urethral fistula is the significant risk to prevent fistula formation multiple layer closure whether it is vascularized flap or pedicle you have to ensure multiple layer closure and you need to know only two or three operation for most of the patient that is the most important thing not the every operation absolutely absolutely yes now can we proceed to understand the test is now yes sir okay can you present the slides Hello, can you hear me? No, you but can't see the slides. Hmm. You are audible, but can't see the slides. No, no, actually. Hello. Yes. Go ahead, please start. One second, sir. Sir, is it visible? Yes, visible. Yes, sir. Uh. Yes, sir. Fifteen years boy uh, presented with the uh, uh, empty left hemiscrotum. Uh, yes. After taking history, there is no history of LUTS or hematuria, revalue, etc. No history of diabetes or TB. In the family members, the past history nothing significant. No surgical history, uh, family history nothing significant. Developmental <laughs> history all the developmental milestones were normal. <clears throat> This is. Uh, can you show the uh, sixth slide, Sumati? You know, play the video. this person is doing the examination see that uh, the scrotum is not developed so much <clears throat> and he is palpating the inguinal region in our case on inspection the abdomen is scaphoid Ambilic was central in position. No lump or no squamous, no venous prominence will see in the abdomen. Right test is in scrotum, <coughs> left side is scrotum. Is underdeveloped. On palpation, it was soft. Uh, the non-tender, no lump, no organomegaly seen. Left test is 
is vaguely uh, palpable in the deep inguinal vein. The meatus is normal. So how will you like to proceed? Who is going to uh, uh, present? Hello. Hello. Uh, which student is going to? Uh, sir, Ajay. 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 I said, yeah, how will you proceed in this case? Uh, sir, from the history, I would like to know that uh, whether the testis was palpable at the time of birth or it is the congenitally absent testis. Good. Uh, Very good. This is like pink, but it's small and soft. In, uh, it's directly palpable in the left deep, deep inguinal ring. Uh, and sir, also there is any history of any uh, inguinal surgery is present or not? That also I would like. There is no history of surgery. No surgical history. Uh, and uh, uh, history of any uh, any uh, another anomaly present uh, like hypospadias so or any hypospadias if it if it is done prior, then uh, no, no, the meatus is normal. So it is. Yeah. No other. Uh, is it history of any pain in left uh, left uh, inguinal in, inguinal region uh, or any uh, episode of severe pain uh, which uh, significant which is a uh, significant and uh, which uh, points towards uh, any torsion of testes or any yes you want good. To take a recent history or a history in the past history of pain in the past Hello. 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 Hi, yes, sir. Mm. Yes. Any history of pain, recent past or recent? In the past. Any history of pain in past or uh, recent past? Sir. Yes, yes. Both. So Both are important. Are going in your mind, uh, why will you try, like to take this history? Uh, sir, uh, as the uh, undetermined test is, uh, there are more chances of uh, torsion of testes in uh, undecided testes in the inguinal canal or anywhere. So, uh, for that reason, I would like to ask uh, regarding the history of pain, or also there is a ch high chance of uh, uh, epidermal orthitis. Uh, uh, so, that's why more the history. Is high chance of epidermal orthitis? Why, sir? Do you want to see anything in examination or anything else? Uh, sir, any cough impulse is present or not? Yeah. Any associated in and hernia on the left side is there. Yes, that's very important. Anything more? So whether rubosity is present in the scrotum or not? Okay, mm -hmm. left side of scrotum. This side of bottom is not well part? developed. Sir, also with that, uh, we would like to examine whether this uh, testis is uh, uh, with uh, with manipulation, it can be brought down to the bottom or not. Whether it is retractile testis or whether it is undescended testis. And if it is undescended testis, then what is the uh, size and uh, consistency of the testis and uh, uh, the uh, and the shape this of case is a very small, uh, maybe a uh, lymph node or a, maybe a atrophic testis in just vaguely palpable in the deep inguinal ring. Do you want to see uh, uh, other or parts of the abdomen where the testis can be present there or not? Uh, yes, so sir. In, in this case, as we, we can palpate the testis in the inguinal canal. Uh, so, the, it is more likely that it is the uh, testes in the inguinal canal, but we should also palpate for uh, the ectopic location of the testes, uh, which is uh, uh, in the peripenal region, prepenal region, or sometimes in perirenal region, or in the uh, 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 perineal region, or sometimes in the uh, opposite scrotums. Lower abdomen. What is the Super most common site of ectopic testis? Superficial in the pouch. Sir, it is superficial to superficial. Well. 
Any question from Polani ma'am? The person who examined didn't examine for impulse on cuffing and didn't examine the other testes at all or the perineal region. Like later on, he discussed. So, what are the regions, other regions where you can find the testes? That is towards the deeping. Uh, Earlier crest, the anterior superior iliac spine, superficial inguinal pouch, the femoral region, perineal region, and one should examine the other testes also. And where, where was the circumcision done? Is there the, it's, uh, I mean, have you taken the history regarding the circumcision? And because the examiner might. It was the indication of the circumcision and whether after circumcision the meters is normal or not. Just just because the child has been circumcised. And it's unlikely that a 15-year-old boy who has been circumcised by a clinician will not notice the absent testis on the other side. That's why I asked why were, was this child circumcised? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Is it ritual or maybe, some indicated? Maybe ritual, ma'am. As of now, the meatus is normal. Maybe ritual, ma'am. Okay. So how do you proceed in this case? Uh, sir, I would like to counsel the patient uh, regarding the uh, uh, his disease, and also tell uh, also counsel the patient that if the age is uh, 15 years, uh, there are high chances of testes being um, uh, testes is uh, being of uh, non-functional. So uh, uh, we will counsel the counsel the patient regarding orchidectomy uh, uh, or orchidoplexis. Why orchidectomy? Uh, sir, if it is a true congenital uh, undescended testis, uh, then there are high chances of uh, uh, testicular tumor or uh, 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 testicular tumor in the future. Uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, it, um, doing orchidopexy at this age would not affect the fertility issue. Uh, so it is better uh, uh, if the patient is counseled properly, then it is better to uh, do the orthopexy at this age. But if patient uh, wants to hear orthopexy, then also we can offer offer orthopexy as a treatment. If the patient would much? have been six years, do uh, uh, would have been the fertility issues coming come in your mind? Which is what is the age? Uh, what is the age after which? And the uh, seminiferous tubules are not developed. Uh, sir, uh, sir, it is seen histologically that the microscopic changes uh, start occurring after one year of uh, undescended testes. So, if it is uh, better to uh, or, uh, do the orthodopexy before one year, then uh, then there is uh, there will be no microscopic changes. But the microscopic changes appears in the testes after three years. Uh, so, uh, after the age of 10 years, the, uh, the uh, quality of uh, semen, uh, the quality of sperm from that tissue will be hampered. And so, uh, this is uh, very good. What's the chance of malignancy, what you told? What, how so many chance times? Of malignancy? Yeah, the chance of malignancy is increased in undecided testes and also to the contralateral testes in a sum amount. Sir. Uh, sir, how many uh, times than the normal? Sir, around four to six times it is increased in the normal. What and even if we do one incident, yes, sorry, of testicular malignancy, normal incidence in the normal people, then it is six times. 
Normal people, it is around, as per my knowledge goes, it is about one in lakhs. Yes, you may correct it afterwards. And I, that means it will be around six or seven times, seven per lakhs. Is it that, that much high? Or it is no, 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 it's not that much high, sir. It's probably one to two times for undescended testes and having opposite side cancer. Uh, the uh, contractor side had higher chance almost four times. For undescended testes, it's not that six times, it's maybe one or two times, sir. Even, Pure after, test. Be, even after being six times, it is not that much higher. Yeah, yeah. Normally, it is one in lakh. Okay, next is Glanjan. Uh, Madam asked to see whether there are other uh, abnormalities present in, uh, in this patient or not. So, what are the yes. syndromes uh, associated with hypothyroidism? What will you find for? Any syndrome? Uh, so, the syndrome could be the Klein filter syndrome, Down syndrome, Prune Belly syndrome, the Tachycardia, Fistula, the Myelomeningocele. Vega syndrome. So this what is the chances case? of having a yes? Question. Now I have a one question. Can you differentiate whether it is the undescended testis or retractile testis by examination of the scrotum? Yes. yes Good sir. question. In the, in the scrotum yes, size right the out the up, and they. Well developed scrotum with the presence of rugosity. If we can pull the testes to the scrotum, base of the scrotum, and if it is after during the traction, if it is safe there, then the retractile testes. So when uh, you answer any question, you have to start from the beginning. That is, you should take the history paper. Patient or guardian will tell that testes sometimes come down and then again go back. So that is the history first. Second, you examine. Development of the scrotum, rugosity of the scrotum, whether you can draw it in relaxed state down to the scrotum. And third is the investigation. In undescended testes, usually the testes may not be well developed than retractile testes for the same patient. So these three will be guide for whether it is retractile or the undescended testes. And another question is, if that is scrotum is empty and you are not sure inguinal region palpation of the mass is not testis, maybe you will not. You should also consider whether it is a vanishing testis also. In that case, you have to ask for torsion that is already you ask. Another is childhood infection, specifically mom orchitis, which was common earlier or any type of infection that also cause nothing of the testis and you may not be able to palpate other than undescended testes. Another one, ma'am says, where well, the testes are developed, but it is gone to the other area, that is ectopic location. So whenever you are not able to find the testes usual location, you have to look for the unusual location. And after all unusual location, you are not able to find in the skin, subcutaneous tissue, or inguinal region, you have to take advantage of the imaging method. Is there any NTP differentiation between a recorded testis and alternative testis is quite difficult. That's why we are recommending orchidopathy even for the tractile testis. So, um, can anybody like to explain ascended testis? Yes. Ascended testis means the size of the testis would be normal. And at the same time, there is a history of what that Bimolas emphasized. The history, that means it was there, but after that, it was ascended. And sometimes the history may not be present. Patients are not aware, and that means parents are not aware, was not aware. But the testis will be up to if mistakenly, but sometimes it is necessary to do the orchiopexy in that time that there will be no problem in uh, uh, making that test is descendant during operation. Th these are the points. Anything else? I don't know. The of but difficult to diagnose ascending testes. I have 
Then, <laughs> even the thirty years, patient of thirty years. Hello. Patient yes, aged thirty well, years. Well. After exploration, we got the good testes with a fantastic pedicle, and it was easily blotted brought, down. Anything? Any comments from Bimolas? Uh, sir, uh, one uh, tricky question for the student: In a six-month-old child, uh, remember infant, if uh, he came uh, with the guardian that one test is unavailable. Uh, how will you palpate or how you will uh, see whether test is come down or not? What manual will do in a six month old child? He will not uh, cooperate with you. Squat. <clears throat> Squat six month old is not possible. Crying of the baby. You have to make cry of the baby that will increase the abdominal pressure. That may decrease the or descend the testes towards the scrotum. Yes. Rakesh is there, Dr. Rakesh? No, he is absent today. Who is the other guy? Other is Tajib is there. Ajay. 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 Ajay is there. Ajay, I want to ask one yes, question sir. to you. Yes, sir. What is the indication of laparoscopy in undescended testes? Sir, if the testes is non-palpable by examination, then uh, it is an indication for diagnostic laparoscopy, sir. No, no, no. By examination is non-palpable, we may palpate or see by imaging also. You should do imaging first rather than doing direct laparoscopy. Exactly. Sir, the role of uh, imaging here is uh, the sensitivity of uh, both MRI and ultrasound are low around 60 percent and uh, also it will not hamper our uh, final treatment plan uh, so if the patient is lean and thin and uh, uh, we uh, patient is cooperative on the examination and we have palpated like in this patient we have palpated the inguinal area which is uh, in in which there is no uh, test is palpable then we can directly proceed with the diagnosis dr tajib if the patient is non cooperative yes, obese, uh, especially in the obese patient uh, there are the uh, indication of uh, doing the ultrasound or uh, mri okay, i want to interrupt it. ajay i want to interrupt you so yes, uh, do you do you routinely prescribe mri before uh, laparoscopy or do you skip mri no sir we skip mri before laparoscopy so why uh, why you skip mri what is the yield of mri for undescended testes? Uh, sir, MRI, one of the indication of MRI is uh, uh, when we do uh, 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 diagnostic lab and the, still the testes is not identifiable and the vast difference and uh, both the uh, arteries are going in the inguinal canal, uh, but uh, this testes is not locatable. Then we, uh, for the detection of the ectopic side, uh, ectopic side of the testes, the MRI can be useful. Oh, that's my question. What is the yield of MRI? Do you routinely need MRI in this case? Yes, sir. Dr. Ajay, is it written in the book? MRI is needed. No, sir. <clears throat> so, a, MRI yield is not, uh, not uh, it is it is around uh, 60 70 percent. So, you do not routinely need MRI. If you are going for a laparoscopy, MRI is at all, but it is not a mandatory to do MRI. Is it clearly written in Campbell? You can see it clearly written in Campbell. The MRI is not mandatory. Yes, if you are planning for laparoscopy, you can go for laparoscopy. Because Dr. it Tajib. will not hamper our surgical plans. Yes. Yeah. yes, sir. What are the two indications for USG in cases of undescended non palpable testes? For <laughs> obese patient and uh, uncooperative uh, if the examination is uh, not obese uncooperative patient this is the first indication second uh, uh, sir if the code is palpable uh, but the is not even palpable. first indication is that obese obese uncooperative patient where you where you are suspicious mm -hmm. that the, the gonad is in the inguinal area then only management will change and second indication is that if you suspect if you are suspicious that there will be ovarian duct abnormalities for that, you have to do a USB. These are two indications written in Campbell. MRI has not been mentioned in Campbell as far as I know. Second, second is diagnostic laparoscopy. Uh, 
MRI is not mandatory. You can do for go for MRI, but it's not mandatory. No, actually, one thing I want to mention that any investigation done should be a turning point for the management. If it cannot turn, suppose we are going for MRI, there is no testis. In spite of that, we have to go for laparoscopy. In MRI, <clears throat> there, if there is testis, no problem. We have to go for laparoscopy. That it is not creating any turning point. Okay. Any investigation should be a turning point. Otherwise, no, there, there, there is the role of MRI because sometimes from a medical legal point of view, uh, if you in laparoscopy, suppose you miss the testis. So in MRI, you are not seeing the testis. So it is the medical legal point of view, it is the prognostic indicator. Medical legal. Medical legal. For medical legal point of view only. That means in the uh, medical. Illness only person, but medical legal point of view, you can do MRI. Uh, so each and every case actually. is a medical legal case, sir. Yes. In that case, you have to do each and every case is MRI. <laughs> no, I don't know this point. <laughs> Medical legal. Okay, next is, next yes, is uh, suppose, yes. no. uh, suppose let doctor, us proceed with the case. Dr. Kollani, Kollani ma'am, Kollani yeah. ma'am has got some queries. Yes. Queries and input over this, especially for this person who has got one well located with testis. If the patient has got hypothyroidism, then both testis are impalpable and by clinical exam, by ultrasonography. Examination yes, yes. Are there in and a very open patient. In that case, I think MRI can be done before going in for a laparoscopy. But like uh, Dr. Rudash Chatterjee has mentioned, we cannot stop short of diagnostic laparoscopy. We can never say after MRI if the testes are not located that this patient has an orchid. We cannot say so. so MRI know, can be done, it is available, but it Single cell for MRI in, the, in Campbell, for MRI in Campbell, it is written that it is difficult to be done MRI because child is usually restless. And second, it will not change the management. So MRI has not been uh, written as a investigation for uh, undescended testes. And another point, why could we do an uh, ultrasound examination of both groins with the a resolution probe is that for the presence of created persistent processes vaginalis or hernial sac if there is any. It may be reflateral or it may be contralateral. So an ultrasonography of the both inguinoscrotal region as well as an ultrasonography of AUB is preferably done because many of the cases it may be associated with mal ascended kidney or absent kidney. So there's no harm in getting an ultrasonography kidney ureter and get it done at the same time. Because most of the setups, ultrasonography is now rather present in your ward only. The residents are supposed to perform it themselves. So there's no harm in putting in the probe and examining the kidney ureter pedal region as well as the contralateral testis in the venoscrotal region and the same sided testis in the venoscrotal region. Ajay, Ajay. Sir, ask someone else, sir. Okay, uh, who is the, uh, Abhilek, Abhilek. Yes, in, sir. In laparoscopy, how will you identify the testes? What structure you want to look after to identify the testes? So first, we'll see for the vas and vas model versus entering the deep inguinal ring. This letter to the median umbilical <coughs> ligament, medial umbilical ligament. If they are entering, it means the testes is in the inguinal canal. Or near the deep ring. So you want to look up to only vas or something other? Else? Vas and the gonadal vessels, sir. Vas and gonadal vessels. Okay. So after the identifying the testes and mobilizing the testes, where what thing you want to uh, do next? Suppose you have the identify the testes and you have mobilized the testes. We will see that. Too. Can we move the test to the opposite side of the sympathetic sympathetic pubis? If it is, if it can be done, then the test can easily be so, but it can be easily done. Suppose it is not uh, not, not going to the opposite uh, ring, uh, opposite side. 
So what the steps you will do want to do? So we can do the stage procedure also. <laughs> what, what is the name? What is the name of the stage procedure? The Fowler Stephens. Who is Fowler Stephens? Who is Stephens? And what exactly they have done? So they were actually. So they have first they have performed the Fowler Stephens test. They just applied the bulldog to the gardenal vessels and look for the, whether there is a cyanosis of the testes or not. Uh, if there is no cyanosis, it means that their collateral circulation is good. So they cut the gardenal vessels and place it in the inguinal canal. Then after six months, they do the stage two procedure and put it in the bottom. <clears throat> Hello. So, Paulus, give us the two stage procedure. Yes, sir. Udaya? Udaya? When do you plan for surgery? Suppose a young newborn comes and there is one test is absent. When do you plan for surgery? Uh, at six months. Six months to one year. Because maximum of the undescended test comes to the slotum by the age of six months. If it is not descended, then we have to go for surgery. Is there any role of hormonal therapy? No role, sir. No role, sir. No role. Sir. Achha, during the laparoscopic procedure, what okay. are the different conditions you can describe depending on absence or presence of both the vas and the vascular structure? Whether vas is absent, why this blood vessel is absent, where both are absent or both are present, but still it is not palpable. What are the different conditions? I didn't get it. Sir, if the both both vas and uh, yes. uh, vessel are present and going into the inguinal canal, then yeah. uh, it, it may be that test is in the inguinal area and we should explore the inguinal area. Okay. Uh, this is the one condition. The one is uh, both the vas and the vessel is present and the test is that uh, deep inguinal ring. In the, with this case, we can try uh, the mobilization and the uh, orchidopathy. Uh, the third thing is, sir, uh, the vas is uh, present, but the testicular vessel is absent. Uh, so, the, uh, oh, sorry, both the testicular and the vas is present, and the testis is absent, in which we can say that it is a vanishing testis, and we need yeah. not uh, to search for testis anymore. Uh, yes. this, uh, another thing is, sir, the testicular vessel is absent, we cannot trace the vessel, and the uh, vas is there. Uh, so, in this case, we need to uh, explore the uh, uh, perirenal area and we need to uh, press uh, the uh, ectopic location to, to the hilum uh, retroperitoneum uh, for uh, in search of the gestures. It can be there uh, just near the origin of the uh, gonadal vessel. And is there is vas is absent? Uh, sir, uh, there is vas is absent, uh, but the testis is present, then uh, it may be. Uh, sorry, it, it may be that it is uh, uh, congenital absence of vas. This may be associated with other renal anomaly also. Ulterior duct so, anomaly and uh, yeah. So there are five or six stages you have to decide during laparoscopy. Don't expect that I will always get the testes inside the abdomen for the Fowler Chipping procedure. Yes. Next. What is Pentis manual? Sir, Pentis manual is when we, we are not able to bring the testes in this system. Simply via the deeping. The medialization of testes. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, we do medialization of the testes uh, medial to the uh, inferior application.
कैसे देना है कब देना है ये जिम्मेदारी तुम्हारा है ठीक है चलो बाय हम भेज देते हैं अभी तुमको मैं और क्या क्या चाहिए बताओ इसका वो दे दे विकास कुमार विकास कुमार प्लीज म्यूट सर पार्किंग में एक स्पेस दिलवाओ हमको एक पार्किंग मेरा यहाँ होता है कि ये खाली कर देंगे तो एक पार्किंग हमको दो गाड़ी है मेरे पास है ना तो एक एक पार्किंग हमको यहाँ पे चाहिए उदय नेक्स्ट व्यूअर और तुमको मेल आईडी हम अपना भेज देते हैं ठीक है चलो थैंक यू नीरज इसको प्रायोरिटी बेसिस पे हेलो बार बार ये सब कैन प्रोसीड फॉर व्यूअर गुड मॉर्निंग कोलानी मैम क्या चेहरा देखते जाते हैं कि सब कुछ मिलेगा तब देगा हेलो यस कैन यू हियर मी यस सर यस सर यस प्रोफेसर कोल्लानी हेलो पार्किंग अलॉट हेलो हेलो प्रोफेसर कोल्लानी Kas Kumar needs to mute himself. Okay. Dr. Jamal, would you like to ask anything regarding this? Okay. Proceed for the word. Hello. Uh, regarding uh, what you are saying, sir. Regarding undescended or viewer. No, undescended. The okay. tail end questions. Yeah. Uh, I only wanted to one, mention one thing that uh, hormonal therapy, according to EAU, it has still got a role in bilateral testes. Yes, uh, particularly bilateral, undescended, non-palpable. Yes. Yes, it has some role in that. Otherwise, yes. it is not. Sir, one small question uh, for the student: How to find a subdural spouse, and whether uh, how many sutures you should uh, use to fix the testis, whether uh, you have to fix the testis or not, and more importantly, where to put the suture, with yeah. what? Ah, uh, sir, sub for subdural spouse, uh, we have to uh, insert our finger, our finger from the inguinal incision. Uh, and create a, a pouch. Uh, 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 create a pouch uh, below the diaphragm. Uh, Malap create create a space between uh, below the diaphragm muscle, and then uh, put an incision over the skin uh, while palpating the finger below it. And uh, we have uh, we have to create a space between the skin and the diaphragm fascia. And after that, creating a space, uh, we have to create a window uh, in the diaphragm, and uh, from that we have to put the artery forceps and bring the testes out. Uh, and uh, Uh, after bringing the testes out, uh, we have to uh, close this window with the sutures, uh, and then we have to close the skin over it. Uh, for sub uh, subdural pouch, uh, if the window is uh, closed properly, then we don't need to uh, fix the testes, and we sh- ideally we should not uh, take bite uh, through the tunica uh, of the testes. Yeah, if the mobilization all, is very good, all of mobilization it. needs to be done. If at all fixation needs to be done, if you that the testicular uh, length is the cord length is not much, it is pulling up. Then what will you suture? Where will uh, you suture? The, the lower part of uh, the, the at the caudal end of the testis, uh, there is uh, some part of the gabapentin is uh, preserved during the surgery. Uh, so we have to suture. No, tunica uh, vaginalis. You have to use tunica. Or tunica vaginalis. Yes, tunica vaginalis. You should always use tunicare. This is a mistake that we do. We put sutures in the testes. This is not to be done. Yeah. Next case, sir. Uh, is the slide visible? No, ma'am. Next Slides slide is not visible. Shown. Okay. now
Is it visible now? Yeah, 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 ma'am. Rumari, not this one, the other one. Viewer. Which which one? Go back. One. Which one? Presentation viewer final. Case. This one. Presentation viewer final. Visible. Hello. Still not visible. Is the slide visible? No, no, no. no not not visible. Okay, okay, one second. Yes, now visible. Okay. Yeah, 12 years old male child. Who is having recurrent superpubic pain and fever since last five to six years? There's no history of Eleucius or uh, sorry. Uh, he's having occasional dysuria, but no hematuria or gravelurea, no history of diabetes, TB. And uh, he's uh, Hypertensive on one drug. <clears throat> All the past history, family history, developmental history are normal. Abdomen is soft. Meat is normal. This is the in position. <clears throat> so, how will you proceed with this test? Recurrent superbibic pain with fever. What was the age, sir? I missed the age. 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. Okay. Nilanjan, can you show the first slide again? 12 years, male child. Can you show the first slide again? It is written 12 years, male child, nothing else. So, who is going slide. to... Who is going to... Tajib, are you there? Can yes, you hear sir. me? Yes, yes sir. Can so you can you take this question? Yeah, how will we proceed? So I did not uh, get a 12 years male child who is having recurrent superbabic pain and fever for the last five to six years. A occasional dysuria. And also his hypertension. I would like to uh, do a urine routine and culture. Yes. Okay, one question. Uh, how to uh, collect the urine for this patient? How will you instruct the patient for appropriate collection of the urine for urine routine examination? I would like to collect the first morning sample midstream. No, you, uh, you, you instruct the patient. You should instruct the patient. How will you instruct the patient? I'll, 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 I'll tell the patient to uh, uh, retract the prepuce, uh, uh, cleanse the glance area, and then uh, collect. 
and then collect a midstream urine clean catch sir clean catch sample of midstream urine should no you have to spell specifically step by step otherwise it will be a contaminant he has to clean the hand first then he has to clean in unsuncan case retract the pipus clean the pipus or if it's circumcised there is no need to retract the pipus then the morning urine sample you urinate the first part should be discarded the middle part should be contained in a clean sterile container then you have to send this container within usually one hour to the laboratory if not able to send keep it deep freeze yes. that's how you have to explain yes Next. 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 Uh, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. The next slide. Uh, so these are the uh, urine examination. Blood examination on the previous slide was also normal. So next, what will I like to do? I'd like uh, urine routine. So I'd, I'd like to uh, see the culture report. Culture is culture no is growth. Good. Yes. I'd like to do uh, an ultrasound of uh, kidney ure uh, uterine bladder. So one question: If a patient or child has fever. and does not have any infection on the routine examination why do you want to uh, do ultrasound Correct. Now, what is the indication of doing apartheid imaging the patient has recurrent episodes of uti yes and uh, so there is albuminuria here so uh, any other I parameter is hypertensive yes hypertensive so if patient have fever and does not respond with antibiotics within 72 hours or having recurrent uti or is hypertensive in childhood or there is renal damage by swing urea creatine you have to do apartheid imaging yes next hello next slide so yeah, this is the usg finding the next what type what investigation do you like to do looking at this usg finding uh, uh, pcs is mildly dilated uh matlab is this bilateral or unilateral yeah bilateral bilateral mildly ureter smith bilateral okay ureters uh so i would like to do a uh, 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 voiding cysto urethrogram in this patient to look for any get away voiding cysto urethrogram <clears throat> will not do anything else would you consider any other investigations before voiding cysto urethrogram routine <laughs> Yeah, tell me what you are already, already mentioned so it is no you have already mentioned up to this the physical examination history and ultrasound and report what is your provisional diagnosis then you will decide the next step what are you thinking uh, that it can be a uh, uh, uti with uh, uh, UTI with uh, reflux, vesicular urethral reflux. Yes, one of the possibility. So posterior urethral it can be a posterior urethral valve. Yes, <laughs> maybe. What is more common, posterior urethral valve or reflux disease? The posterior urethral valve. So why didn't you say urophlometry first? Yes. Yes, I would like to do a urophlometry. Okay, next what? Next slide. So, according to your choice, describe this is it there.
Tell me the finding, please. The, the, the are two films of MCU. The Scout film. Uh, uh, the there's no bony abnormality or soft tissue shadows appear normal, and no radio opaque shadow is seen. Uh, and uh, and uh, on MCU, uh, 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 a, a distended bladder is seen, along with uh, uh, reflux of uh, dye into the uh, ureter and the kidneys, where the ureters are dilated. The little ureters are dilated. Hello. Yes, sir. In this MCU, uh, the capacity of bladder is it normal or appears appears to be sir enlarged? Enlarged. Do you want anything else in MCU? Sir, the voiding voiding phase. I think. Lateral films. Don't you want lateral films? Lateral and uh, voiding voiding. Why are you looking for lateral films? So to rule out any diverticulum. Yes, to rule out any diverticulum. So what is your now diagnosis? So it's still like to Bilateral. have a, a maturating avoiding phase to see because the posterior urethra will be visible in that. And next slide, next slide. What about bladder contour? Dr. Tazib? Yes, sir. What about bladder contour? Sir, contour appears uh, mildly, uh, slightly sir, irregular. I cannot appreciate it properly. More or less regular? Yes, sir. Uh, more or less it appears regular. Okay. So it points to a particular direction. So the posterior urethra appears to be uh, normal in this case. So what is your diagnosis now? The bilateral uh, vesico urethral reflux. Uh, and with it can be a neurogenic. Neurogenic? Why neurogenic? The bladder, uh, the usually distended bladder is seen. So this is the pre void film. So there will be distended. Is there any indication of neurogenic problem from history or from physical examination? No, so no, you sir, are going sir. directly to the neurogenic cause? Okay. Common thing occur commonly. It may be, but common thing occur commonly. So reflux. Tell me the grade of reflux. That is very important. That is How many grade, grades? How many grades? Grade five. Grade five by seeing this film. How you will decide? Sir, the pre previous film. Uh, okay, okay, okay. How How do you grade reflux, Doctor Abhishek? So in grade one, so there is no. No reflux in the non dilated ureter. In grade two, sir, into the pelvis and calicious without dilatation. In grade three, sir, there's moderate dilatation of the ureter, pelvis, and calicious with minimal blunting of the fornicules. In grade four, sir, there will be a ureteral tortuosity and dilatation of the pelvis and calicious. In grade five, sir, gross dilatation of the ureter, pelvis, calicious. And and ureteral tortuosity. So, what grade is it? This is a multiple grade five. So, can it be a mega ureter bilateral?
Hello. Somebody answer that. Can't comment. Sir, can't comment of that. Yes. Dr. Oh. Sajid, can it be yes, megaliter? <clears throat> can it be a megaliter? Don't know, sir. Are mega ureters refluxing? Mega ureters can be obstructing refluxing, sir. Yeah, yeah both can be. Both can be. Both, uh, commonly, can be both. commonly. The commonly they are obstructing. Yes, commonly they are obstructing. So there will be no reflux. Yeah, it is very rare for a mega ureter to reflux. <clears throat> Next slide. What is the investigation? He's already written. How do we approach this patient? What are the ways to approach? So first we see the age of the patient and grade of the reflex. Usually the grade one reflex there is spontaneous resolution of 190 to 100%, in grade 2, 80 to 90%, in grade 3, 60 to 70%, and grade 4, 30%, and grade 5, usually there is less than 10% around. So, is it a primary reflex or secondary reflex? It's a primary reflex. Why this particular investigation? Anyone? The why DMSA? Why not any other? So it is treated and as treated. So we can see the scars of the kidney. So in any case of lower track problem, you have to ensure that upper track is normal. That is our main purpose. You have to save the kidney. You want to know whether the kidney is properly functioning or not. This is more of functional imaging rather than anatomical delineation. So functional imaging in the form of renal scan is important. That is why you have done it. There may be some hypopenic area or uh, uh, photopenic area that cause renal scarring, that is permanent damage of the kidney because of the repeated reflux or reflux as you do UTI. That's the region you have to do upper track uh, functional imaging. Yeah, and the so DMSA is the DTP only investigation the which picks up both, both the renal function as well as the cortical defect. But yeah. the normal other investigations like DTP and all that will not be able to do this. The morphological investigation will be based by the DMSA. Yes. Basically, it's a top-down approach. We are looking for a significant, how significant is the VUR and we want to establish that how much treatment will be helpful for this one. So how will you proceed to put this patient? This what, what will the management? Why there is hypertension? The renal scarring. And damage to renal sign karma. So how to... Uh, Lange on. Yes, sir. Lange on. Yes, sir. Oh, Just a second. Uh, yes. Achha, ab, abish, uh, abilek, yes, sir. In this GMS air syndicate, which kidney is poorly functioning? Uh, the left side, sir. Yes. Left kidney is poorly functioning, sir. Which kidney? Left kidney, sir. Left kidney? Yes, sir. Describe this film. What are the black areas signature? Sir, in this, sir. Uh, Outline is hello. 
No, no, he is correct. It is the left side. When it is the camera is on the posterior side, it is the left, and on the anterior side, it is the right. Left is left function on the left side is less, and scar is more on the left side. There is scar and irregularities in the right side also. Yes. Next. What to do? So, as patient is already twelve years, so chances of spontaneous resolution are no more. So we go for the surgical intervention, sir. Now to confirm whether it is a primary reflux or secondary reflux. How to confirm? So if uh, If the reflux in the passive, then it's a primary reflux. Reflux. It is primary. How it is primary? How? From which investigation you got? It is primary. It now in the recent twelve edition Campbell, one is one thing is written clearly. Actually, there is very minimal percentage of viewer which will be called as primary. most of all are secondary it may be due to obstruction it may be due to high pressure system okay yes sir. sterile urine rarely do any harm infected yes, urine along with pressure infected urine do harm and if it is added with the pressure then the harm is more in yes, this sir. situation the left kidney is almost uh, 27% or something like that uh, in the next slide it is that the 26 okay that means there is something in the bladder before going for any anti reflux procedure we have to manage the bladder yes sir how to manage that one thing that is uh, we have to put the pyrethral catheter pyrethral catheter then and give antibiotic no antibiotic for the prevention of infection yes sir and it is the ongoing damage in the kidney probably you have to prevent the and also sir early stage of scarring can be prevented in some way by continuous antibiotic prophylaxis early stage of scarring yes it is it early stage or late stage so late stage sir late stage that means we cannot allow for the damage yes sir then how to manage professor kolani any comment regarding this am i audible yes yes audible uh, one important point in the history one should ask how is the void pattern whether the child has got a good urinary stream so the child has attained night time continence or if there is any nocturnal enuresis and equally important is the bowel pattern whether the child is constipated or not and at what age did he reach the uh, continence of both stool and urine the current day entity for especially for such cases where there is no bladder outflow obstruction many of these children are uh constipated also and is down under the broad heading of dysfunctional voiding syndrome so this is an important part of the history and while examining you, you can easily ask the child or the young boy to void so that you can see the stream yourself 
and in the ultrasonography you will have to ask one important part is to perform a perineal ultrasonography to see whether the posterior urethra is dilated or not and the bladder wall thickness a chronically uh, obstructed bladder which is trying to void against a resistance may show bladder wall thickness but in this case the bladder outline is quite regular and the capacity is quite good so it's unlikely the patient has got posterior urethral obstruction of any kind and one must have a good lumbosacral spine x ray and even if required an mri a neurogenic bladder can present without any neuro deficit also these are the important things to remember especially in this case a properly done urodynamic assessment is very essential and many things depend on the findings of the make assessment also mudai do you like to elaborate on this point yes one thing that is the bladder uh, morphology from mcu sometimes it is not accurate so uh, we have need the cystoscopy for the finding the trabeculation the features of obstruction and after that if it is present we have to go for <laughs> urodynamic study and other thing there is a bowel bladder management bowel bladder disease that should be eliminated at the same time the spinal this uh, that is the is there any tethering of the cord is present or not which may be diagnosed with the mri these are the point before jumping on anti reflux procedure okay yeah. now next yes okay, well said so uh, what is the role of urodynamic study it is to see the whether the bladder pressure that is the pdet q max is higher or not whether the dlpp is okay or not it should be below 40 and at the same time pdet max and rest that is the irritable bladder or something that is the secondary features of bladder outlet obstruction but in case of reflux there is a pop up mechanism because pressure will not generate as per this because the urinary flow upwards yes that was the previous right. concept yes Absolutely. it was the concept it was there but it is the continuous structure that is the ureter is a tube containing the fluid and bladder is a spherical structure containing the fluid according to pascal's law the pressure will be the same and equally distributed in the whole of the system that's why in the reflux previously it was believed that there will be some problem in the urodynamic study but now it is mandatory to do that urodynamic study for all reflux patient before jumping on the surgical or some management yes so that you are perfectly right so we have to do urodynamic study in, in each of these cases uh, before going to any reimplantation or something like that and before before the urodynamic study as my madam has rightly pointed out that bowel bladder syndrome or a dysfunctional voiding is yes, more yes. commonly associated than the neurological uh, disease especially mm. in conditions where there is no clinical evidence of a neurological disease in such yes. a scenario dysfunctional voiding needs to be addressed first before mm. con contemplating any surgery yes any queries from students no sir hmm? is it clear yes sir in the reflux first thing is the infection sterile urine rarely cause damage kidney damage or you can take it that there is no damage from the sterile urine but if the sterile urine is under pressure that means high blood pressure but the urine is dry sterile that is the it may cause the kidney damage and the infected urine plus the high pressure in the system it will cause more damage in the kidney and for the monitoring the um, functional monitoring actually you all know that is the this patient this type of patient it is on ckd is it not this patient i think is in ckd okay from the pictures of 
MCU and the reflux present in the. This, this is a picture of CKD. Yes, CKD. That means CKD, the most... creatinine is normal. Even then, it is a CKD. Correct. It is uh, most uh, most of the people um, actually think that when the creatinine is uh, more than one point two or something like that, the patient is in CKD. No, modern classification that is from two thousand years. Uh, to, uh, in the year 2000, it was graded, that is the CKD. If it is the normal GFR, still there is a morphological or biochemical changes in the kidney, it will be in stage one or grade one CKD. That means we have to monitor whether the kidney is worsening or not. And it is possible only through the GFR. That means we have to know the GFR at present, after managing the patient with the antibiotic or anything else, we have to keep record that the GFR is at the static. It is not falling. That the stage of CKD is not increasing. OK, that is the another investigation to be done. So CKD is grading along with GFR, the albumin creatinine ratio. That is also yeah, the yeah. subclassification. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sub classification, yes. Yeah, sub classification, yeah, yeah. but subgrade. Mm. Yes. This and patient already has got macroscopic albuminuria. I mean, normal urine routine is showing presence of protein. So this patient is definitely in CKD and hypertensive. Creatinine yes. microalbumin ratio is more important or pertinent when there is uh, nominal protein or just trace amount of albumin present on routine examination. Okay, next so slide, please. Would you like to elaborate on any kind of pharmacotherapy advisable for this kind of patient? Pharmacotherapy, actually, there is some nephroprotective medical therapy may be necessary. Uh, before that, we have to know one thing, that is the why there is albuminuria or albumin creatine ratio is increased. Uh, there is some loss of, that is the coating layer in the vessels. It is called glycocalyx. In this situation, when the kidney is in strain, that is, some, there is some toxins in the kidney. So we can eliminate those toxins by some nephroprotective medicine. At the same time, for the uh, keeping the pressure, I think he is getting those SCD medicines. Yes, you are meaning. Yes. SCD because you mean. Yes, yes, yes. I think he is getting some medicine. But sir, AC inhibitor will be started only after the hypertension is detected, not before that. Yes, this patient has got hypertension. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think that is going on. Anything to comment? Before embarking on uh, mm -hmm. anti reflux surgery, will you try? Will the patient be asked to try nighttime drainage uh, so that there is minimal reflux when the patient is asleep in spine position? Will it, you yes, think yes. it can benefit the patient? If there is, before that, if we confirm that there is some pressure with neurodynamic study, we have to do it. Bladder outlet and nighttime. Actually, the the uh, high pressure system it harms mainly during the nighttime. The bladder is filled. There is no evacuation, so it gets more time to damage the upper tract, particularly the kidney nephron. So that is. Uh, very much necessary, but it is difficult to maintain that nighttime evacuation with catheter. Yes. Patient compliance is very essential. Yes, that is that's why it is difficult.
Anything from Bimalesh? Dr. Jamal, anything to comment? I think so. We have covered everything, but uh, one thing I wanted to say medical that continue? the continuous antibiotic prophylaxis, what should be the role of CA in such a scenario? Actually, Nilanjan, can you answer? Huh? For the student on Andrew. behalf of student regarding the CAP, CAP. Actually, hello. 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 Personally, I do not believe on continuous anti antibiotic prophylaxis. It is a very old treatment, and all the literature and the study. It has not shown any remarkable result or some significant outcome. That's why if there is infection, I'll go for antibiotic therapy. Therapy means the antibiotic treatment to control the infection. Otherwise, continuous antibiotic prophylaxis, I don't, uh, personally, I don't believe. If there is something, can I, the can student. I, can I put yes. a word, sir? Yes, yes. CAP, according, I mean, EAU has also reviewed and AU has also reviewed. CAP has got a role uh, before toilet training. Before the child achieves a toilet training, then CAP has got a role. Otherwise, for in such a scenario, post toilet training, it has got no role, as yes. you rightly pointed out. So yes, the only yes. scenario where CAP is used <clears throat> is, is uh, before five years. That subset, okay. Yeah, that particular subset, it can be useful and CAP, mm -hmm. you know, can be used as a follow-up therapy, you know, without doing any, you know, on when you are trying to maintain on a conservative therapy. So there in, uh, for unilateral cases, definitely CAP has got some role. Other than that, CAP has got minimal role. It has fallen out of this figure. Anything? So we, we can proceed to next, next uh, slides. That is the, is there any video of incision over? Urotocin. Yes, yes. Yes, I have, sir. Yes. You just I'll, I'll present. It. I will present. Okay, okay. you present. Sir, uh, I have not present as a case by case as you are doing. I have uh, present overall surgical video of Erotosil. Anyone okay, can okay. ask question and discuss. Yes, yes, I will sir. stop the video. Uh, yes. Chatterjee, sir, would it not be a good idea to discuss a little bit about the surgical aspect and the uh, better management of viewer. contemplating a surgery? Of viewer. Of VR, yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. You can. The, there are so many surgeries. The student yeah. should understand which has got what advantage and what pros and cons. Yes, yes, yes. You just give some hints. Will... Can anyone answer? Any student? Any student would like to volunteer? Open surgery, open surgery or endoscopic surgery. Just name a few surgeries. Anyone? So it could be extravasical and intravasical. Okay. And extravasical is a lich Okay. And so in intravasical, so this is actually lead matter polyton is what extra intra. Sorry? So Glenn Anderson. Come again? So lead matter polyton. Mm -hmm. And so Glenn Anderson, Cohen's close trigonal. Okay. Which will you do? I mean, given a chance, which will you uh, do? And why? Modified lead better polyteno, sir. Sorry? Lead better modified lead better polyteno. Okay. okay. Why? It has the maximum chances. The success rate is very high, sir. And so in this. Uh, is it? Is it written somewhere? It tells. Is it written somewhere the polytonal lead better is better than Glenn Anderson or Cohen's cross trigonal? I'm not aware. Is, sir, are you aware? Actually, all the surgery on all the uh, reflux 
some problem in the literature. Which one is better? Uh, difficult to uh, yes, exactly. Comment. It is, it is difficult to comment. Yes, but particularly we should understand. We should understand what does what. Yes, that is the okay. main theme. So why why palatinum led better became popular is that because the ureter is a, is final ureteric new hiatus will be at the orthotopic position. The position of the ureter doesn't change. In a polytonal letter, better. So a future ureteroscopy and everything in future, if he requires, it will be like an orthotopic uh, position. Whereas in a Glenn Anderson, the neo hiatus is inferior to the original hiatus. Yes, sir. And a cross trigonal one, the ureter crosses. So the ureter okay. is angulated. So ureteroscopy, if at all needed in future, yes. is going to be very difficult with a rigid ureteroscope. Yes, sir. Flexible. So that is why. And the Anderson uh, uh, Baldwin led better scored over others because it maintains the normal anatomy. It only okay. changes the position in the bladder hiatus. Yes. Okay. So yes. the length, some mucosal length increases, whereas the ureteric orifice as is at the hiatus. That is why it scored over others. It is easier to do, and it has got uh, minimal interference in the normal anatomy. Yes. Now, I have a question for student. Uh, is there any option for transurethral procedure for basic ureter reflux? Yes. Have you heard or seen? Yes, yes, good question. Yes. And this is a sting procedure. And we can put a deflux near just the uh, refluxing your, near the, below the orifice of the refluxing. Where to put this injection and what type of cystoscopy do you use? Some mucosa Can you use it with normal cystoscope? Why? There's no idea about Normal cystoscopy is not straight. It is somewhat bending. But you have to give injection to a straight cystoscope. That is called offset cystoscope. Yes, absolutely right. From this cystoscope, you have to inject its come, reflux is come at one ml vial. It's very delicate. You have to put one at a time, one ml. If you have to use another ml, you have to take another vial. Yes. Needle and, also, to put it. and needle also gets destroyed after single use. Mucosal, sir. Yeah. Some mucosal on the which side? Which on side the of the ureteric side. orifice? The lateral side. No. Yeah. And adequate to raise a mold or a globular <clears throat> swelling to just compress the ureteric orifice, not that totally compress. Otherwise, it will cause obstruction. Is it is it lateral, yeah. Dr. Bimlesh? Is it lateral or inferior? So it, mostly uh, in prolateral side, not on the yeah. medial side. Yeah, not on the medial yeah. side. So it is yeah, prolateral. Yeah. So that you raise a wheel or a volcano effect compressing the ureter. Or if you are doing a hit technique or a double hit technique, then also you have to go inferior, just below the erotic orifice. But nowadays this procedure has become absolute, sir. Which one? Deflux one. No, there are, there are other things which have come in. It has not become absolute. There are indications, yeah. for, especially for if you are trying to manage a mild grade of VUR, especially grade 1, 2, 3, then uh, it has got a role, still got a role. Sir, it is available in the market. It yeah, is. yeah, it's available. It is available. But it is costly. One ML costs approximately more than 50,000. Yes, yes. Uh, right. I, I want to differ in this because the uh, recent, uh, recently Deflux is now out of market. Red people are no more, no more marketing it. And uh, Deflux has now, now got little load because you have to give six monthly, uh, six monthly dose. And uh, it is not cost effective also. So the... Uh, I think the deflux is uh, the what uh, the student is saying that um, you can safely say that deflux has now little role in case of management of viewer. Yeah, yeah, that may be true, sir. That may be true. Any role of vesicoscopy repair? What is your experience on that? Some um, you uh, periodic people do vesicoscopy regularly. I have seen, but I, no, I don't know. Do do we don't do it. <laughs> uh, I have seen ma'am doing oh. in SGPGI. Yeah. 
doing SDP jai, Dr. Ansari is doing regularly vesicoscopic repair of urotary, uh, urotary implants. Or uh, what is the take on vesicostomy? No, I asked about vesicoscopic repair of you. Not vesicoscopy. Vesicoscopic repair of. Okay, okay. That's that's the different different thing. There is a new vesicle. There is vesicoscopic repair of urotary implantation. Yes. Yeah. Laparoscopic transvesicle. Transvesicle laparoscopy. Yeah. Transvesicle laparoscopy. This. Yeah. That is good option, but I have. Actually, I have got many patients of vesicular urinary reflux, particularly with postural valve, extrophy. But I have done, I have got patients more than uh, around 200 of vesicular urinary reflux. But I have done reimplantation only in one, two, one or two patients. Most of the patients don't require any type of intervention, but it is my concept and my treatment, but it is not uh, written in the book. That's why what are the uh, various types of treatment you have to discuss that vesicoscopic treatment, laparoscopic treatment, laparoscopic, that is the lich Gregor is good option. And the vesicoscopic, that is the Cohen is the best. It is not the uh, it is a uh, lead bitter, is uh, difficult to do the psychoscopically, but Cohen is easy. Is it? Yeah, I think so, sir. Yes. Anything to discuss? I think we can move on to the next topic. Yes. Sir, I am sharing, sir, sharing my screen, Eurotrosil. Hmm. How to share my screen? New share. New share files. Anand, how to add a Zoom class? Oh, Is it visible, sir? Visible. Visible? Yes. Okay, uh, I am uh, presenting surgical management of urotrosil. So first, tell what is urotrosil? It's an ectopic ureter. Any ureter, single or duplex, that does not enter inside the trigonal area of bladder. That is called ectopic ureter. And what is ureterosil? It is a cystic dilatation of dispal aspect of the ureter. They are both the developmental anomaly. It is either intravesical or extravesical. Maybe obstructive normal surface is maybe associated with single or duplex system. Maybe unilateral bilateral. So multiple variation is possible for ureterosil. This is one of the ultrasound showing. Eurotrosil picture, typical eurotrosil picture. So there are different classification for, for the uh, practical implication. It may be single system, obstructive, non-obstructive, or purpose is to preserve or oxidize. And for duplex system, usually the lower moiety has reflux and upper moiety is obstructive. So this is one of the duplex system eurotrosil picture showing the obstructive upper moiety and the lower moiety usually have reflux because of the orientation. For associated reflux, what will be the management? Usually the urotary reconstruction, depending on the grade of reflux, either urotary urotostomy or urotary reimplantation. For obstruction, if the moiety is non-functional, there will be excision or incision or puncture technique of the urotrosil. How to diagnose? Proper diagnosis is important before treatment decision. Diagnosis means clinical presentation, examination, imaging, 
लाइक अल्ट्रासाउंड सिटी और इवन एम आर आई और रेनाल्स कैन फॉर अपर ट्रैक चेंजेस कॉमन क्लिनिकल पेजेंटेशन और फ्रीक्वेंट यूरिट एंड इन्फेक्शन दिस इज मोर कॉमन बोथ मेल एंड फीमेल एंड फीमेल यूजली प्रेजेंट समटाइम्स विथ इनकॉन्टिनेंस विच इज नॉट हैपन इन मेल पेशेंट प्री नेटल केसेस हाइड्रोनोफ्रेस इज वेरी सस्पिशस नीड टू डिफरेंशिएट फॉर मेगा यूरेटर एंड सीवियर ग्रेड रिफ्लक्स नॉट ऑल यूरेटोसिल नीड इमीडिएट इंटरवेंशन एसिम्टोमेटिक सिंगल सिस्टम विथ नो अपर टेक चेंजेस डज नॉट नीड एनी एक्टिव ट्रीटमेंट ओनली फॉलो अप so the type of surgery depends on many factor patient factor disease factor the kidney status is range from no intervention to simple transurethral incision to complex procedure sir any questions from student sir i will come to the video part then i will ask maybe okay. question uh, there are one and two slide more maybe okay. then there is video emergency operation sometimes may be needed for urosepsis either transurethral incision or urotorostomy for very small child complex surgery like hemineprectomy reimplantation may be done open or minimal incision technique goal of the urotorostomy management preservation of renal function elimination infection obstruction reflux maintenance of urinary incontinence and minimizing surgical morbidity goal may be same for all patient but achieving these goals may be done by various method and various technique and here lies the great dilemma on managing each and every case so this is the surgical video of urotrosil management that is only for transurethral sorry so for the student this is a cystoscopic presentation of a globular swell inside the urinary bladder of a 2 year level old child what may be the possibility anyone a 12 year old child male child having a cystoscopic appearance of this globular swelling the ureteral seal is one uh, and uh, uh, can be a pseudo ureteral seal also a dilated ectopic uh, ureter yeah these are the more common others so i am showing this video yes you are right this is a ureterosil intravesical ureterosil of left sided system the typical globular swelling and you can see there is some urinary z on compression of the urotrosil so there are different school of thought as to what are the best form of definitive surgical management some prefer an upper tract approach in which the non functioning renal moiety of the upper tract has to be dealt with and some prefer the lower tract approach lower tract approach you can see the most commonly performed procedure can someone say what is the most common transurethral management of urotrosil that is full thickness transverse incision uh, of the ureter seal uh, preferably staying closer to the uh, bladder floor near the bladder uh, base of the bladder base of the bladder yes this is the correct answer sometimes it is called smiley incision smiley incision uh, why it is at the near the base of the bladder is there any reason so so that uh, uh, if we do that the chance of reflux will be less with this technique so yes. what is your purpose our purpose is to relieve the obstruction yes. at the same time if you remove the obstruction excessively there will be chance of de novo reflux post operative period 
Yes. That is why you have to relieve the obstruction maximally and also does not induce the reflux. Is there any other technique uh, which claims to have lesser reflux rates? Endoscopic techniques. One technique is the smiley incision. Is there yeah, any technique? Yeah, it's the multiple punches can be done. Water can. Uh, yes, yes. So multiple puncture. Where should you do puncture? Where should you do puncture? The puncture should be done. Uh, most so this part. is the side of puncture. The same site where you put the incision, the inferomedial site, multiple puncture either with the hot cautery or maybe using the laser. Both have usually same effect. So how we will examine the urotrosil during cystoscopy? It's full bladder, half bladder, or empty bladder? So we, uh, usually urotrosil, FSA, uh, there is assessment of the urotrosil and full bladder. So we should start with a, a, a less filled bladder and slowly uh, distend the bladder. Yes. Semi-filled bladder. So there is two types of urotil for surgical implication. One is the intravesa, completely intravesical component. That is the complete intravesical. Another is the both intravesical and the extravesical, that is the parurethral component. So yes. in case of intravesical urotrosil, a sing, multiple puncture or single smile incision will be sufficient. But for extravesical component, sometimes you need extra incision or the puncture to the urethral component that I will show later on. Another thing, this is common, uh, common uh, comment uh, before I uh, 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 made this video, I tell every uh, younger uh, urologist or the juniors that uh, good record creeping especially surgical video recording is very important for every urologist. This is not only for the medical legal purpose, but also for the educational purposes. I have done many urotrosil, maybe everyone done many urotrosil, but without any proper recording of my surgery uh, uh, system. So for juniors, kindly invest in decent surgical video recording system from the very beginning of practice. That will help you immensely, both from the medical legal purpose and from the educational purpose. Now for the transurethral approach, uh, uh, this is a 12 year old child. Now uh, consider this is a six month old child and what will be your approach? It depends on the presentation of the patient. Uh, if the patient presents in acute septic condition and yes. uh, the patient is not responding to conservative management, then we may take up the patient for a transurethral incision or uh, there are other options like uh, 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 distal urethrostomy can also be done. Yes, this is very important. For smaller child, six months or less, transurethral management may be difficult even with pediatric scope sometimes. In that case, even oh. open urethrostomy may have to be done to save the child from urosepsis. But with the availability of the smaller instrument and laser instrument, most of the cases, transurethral management or yeah. emergency incision or puncture can be done. Uday, sir, any comment for transurethral management? Yes, it is the not only good, but is the best management for the urethrosil. Now the question is when to operate? If there is some incidental urethrosil is found, whether I will go for uh, this incision or not, or observe. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it is the necessary whether the main our main motto is to preserve the kidney function. If the kidney yes. function is okay and there is urethrosil, 
we have to wait wait and watch is there any any problem that is a recurrent infection or something else afterwards and we have to go for the incision and regarding the incision actually the smile incision is the most popular and most recommended but afterwards it was shown by some famous pediatric urologist that any incision is sufficient there is no not to create a smile incision anywhere in, you can put incision at any position okay and next question the reflux whether there will be reflux will be there or not what's your idea any student can answer regarding the reflux are we we should be afraid of reflux or there is no fear of reflux so there is 20 to 40% chance that uh, reflux can happen after transurethral incision so follow up is required yes and because after transurethral incision there is around uh, uh, 40 to 50% need of secondary procedures later on in life so now, uh, follow up is very important yes yes if there is reflux it is a treatment what should be the treatment there is the same treatment already discussed there is a first of all there is a medical treatment if there is infection if it is the recurrent if there is obstruction further obstruction then we have to relieve the obstruction and one thing the reflux why the reflux is not that much after cutting the ureteri cortex actually reflux that is the in the reflux surgery we want to maintain the 1 is to 5 tunnel or something like that the tunnel effect is should be maintained but in the ureteral seal after cutting that whole of the tunnel is lost but there is no that much reflux why actually if the ureteral flap mechanism. Seal, eh? pardon flap flap mechanism yes it may be the flap mechanism and another mechanism is that the efflux prevents reflux efflux means the what the urine is coming urine basically in the ureter of the ureteral seal is thicker it is muscular so there is high but that is the comparatively high pressure in the efflux that prevents the reflux that may be the possibilities i cannot uh, say it, uh, it it is the it is the main thing but another thing what dr jamal mentioned there is the flap mechanism for the smile incision maybe both are uh, both may be possible next it is the what is this is the ureterosil ureterosil so this is uh, this is another mechanism the using laser and yes. uh, remember if there is a difficulty in finding ureteral orifice you are not sure about the ureteral orifice uh, before starting the cautery or the laser you can always put some guide wire for identification it is necessary yeah yes sir okay sometimes there is chance of so ureteral is so large there is chance of uh, injuring to the other ureter or the trigon because of thickness of the ureteral wall or you have to put uh, uh, press excessive force uh, in thick wall this thick wall ureteral seal will be better cut by the laser not only that if the ureteral seal associated with the stone which is very common uh, then laser will be the most appropriate therapy because it can treat the stone also yes so after the transurethral management the most important thing is you have to follow up the patient this is not the definitive treatment for all or every patients this is suitable treatment for most of the single system intravesical ureterosil regular follow up examination and imaging is important depending on the clinical situation upper tract changes etc 
severe ultrasound urine examination is sufficient for most of the patient. Imaging may be done in post-operative period, one on three monthly or even six monthly, depending on the situation of the patient. Resurgery following endoscopic surgery indicated for recurrent persistent symptom or UTI or continuous damage to the upper tract. Usually for duplex system, the upper moiety is obstructing and the lower moiety is refluxing. Or combination of both upper moiety obstructing and lower moiety refluxing may be present. In that case, endoscopic therapy may not be suitable. You need definitive surgical procedure, which is more complex and more challenging. If the patient is not improving symptomatic radiologically, complex reconstructive surgery may be needed. Uh, for summarization, urotrosis is a common clinical scenario. It may be single, duplex, unilateral, bilateral, and renal function determine the ultimate management. Single obstructive, remember, if it is obstructive, then only it needs treatment. Otherwise, you need only follow-up. Endoscopic treatment is the initial preferred approach. Follow-up is very important, both clinically and radiologically. Complex surgery may be needed for persistent symptom or severe disease from the very beginning. Any question or anything you want to know from student side, you can ask. For the students, what is urotrosting? Urotrosting disproportionate. So urotrosting disproportionate is uh, unobstructed, uh, unobstructing urotrosting uh, with a uh, in a duplex system where the upper moiety appears to be normal, but it is dysplastic. Other features? Ureter is not dilated beyond the bladder. Yes, sir. Ureter is not dilated. So the kidney appears to be normal, but the upper moiety is dysplastic. Yes. In the duplex system. You told regarding pseudo urotrosis now. What is pseudo urotrosis? Yeah, he has told probably. Dilated What is seco urotrosis? The seco urotrosis is urotrosis having an opening in the bladder with a submucosal extension into the uh, beyond the bladder neck into the urethra. Yeah, so it have both the intravesical and the extravesical okay. component. Yeah. What is Zener syndrome for ectopic ureter? Ectopic ureter? So Zener syndrome is uh, ectopic ureter with uh, uh, absent ipsilateral kidney and uh, seminal vesicles. Seminal. Seminal cyst. Cyst, cyst, yes, sir. Cyst, cyst, sorry. Cyst and absent. Anything regarding uterus hill? Actually, they say. When? Yes, Dr. Jamal. Yeah, I was saying, sir, about the Zener syndrome. They say seminal vesicle cyst. I encountered yeah. one uh, uh, Zener syndrome, which I operated laparoscopically. So it had all the features of Zener syndrome. But uh, when I did it uh, laparoscopically, it was not one single cyst. Rather, they say it is a seminal vesicle abnormality. So a, it's a long tubular structure which gets convoluted and, you know, it is jumped, jammed in one place. So it's not a cyst. It's, it's, low, it's more like a tube which is coiled on itself. So various uh, types of abnormalities can be seen in Zener syndrome. So any cystic structure behind the prostate, especially in a young patient with a renal agenesis, <clears throat> should prompt the diagnosis of Zener syndrome. That's what I saw. I mean, I encountered one case only. Sir, it can be a prostatic utricle also. Yes, it can be. An enlarged prostatic utricle. It can be, ma'am. <clears throat> it can. But then the uh, we did a transurethral ultrasound, uh, transrectal ultrasound, and it didn't show a prostatic cyst. So we didn't say that. <clears throat> 
plus MRI was more suggestive of, of a seminal vesicular abnormality rather than a prosthetic cyst or a prosthetic utricle. <clears throat> Yes, Chatterjee sir, your comments. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And regarding the follow-up of urotrosil, yes, uh, not only for the urotrosil, but all dilated pelvic calicial system for hydronephrosis or reflux or something else. That is a common follow-up is that after getting the sufficient treatment, maybe it's medical or surgical, the common follow-up is the ultrasonographic renometry. That is the measurement of the calyx and the thickness of the cortex and the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvis, whether it is increasing or decreasing. <clears throat> if there is some um, uh, pa the parameter which is uh, indicating that it is deteriorating, then you have to go for the DTPA renal scan to find out the GFR. In this way, we have to manage. We have to, idea is to keep the patient in the, uh, in the same stage of CKD, not upstaging of CKD. Is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any uh, queries from the students? Sir, an important part of this USG ultrasonographic renal biometry these days, they are performing the assessing the resistive index also with the help of the Doppler, yes. which yes. can predict an early deterioration of the renal function and endovascular hypertension also. Along with that, the biochemical parameter that is the albumin creatinine ratio, whether there is any pressure on the kidney or not, that is, that will uh, indicate if there is an increase in the ACR, that will indicate there is some pressure in the kidney. So we have to go for further investigation in the tract, whether there is a pressurized bladder or some ureter, or there is some obstruction of there is present or not. Okay. I think we have covered and time is almost. Ronjan sir is present. Dr. Ronjan sir. Nilanjan. Yes sir. Dr. Singh. Dr. Ranbir Singh. Are you there? <laughs> Nilanjan? Yes, sir. We have covered everything for today. Okay. Then we, have, we may conclude now. And yes, sir. I think uh, the next program on next day, that is on Sunday, from 10, is it? Yes, 10, sir. 10 a.m. Pyeloplasty procedures and re-implant patient procedures. Posterior valve, you are covered. Posterior valve, pyeloplasty, and reimplantation. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank Good night. You, sir. Good night.